So I have a slightly different sentiment from a lot of Linux users. Um, I hate Windows, but I don't hate Microsoft. So um, I just find Windows is sluggish and I don't love the telemetry, but I put up with it. Um, the system administration is really weird when you try to set multiple IP addresses and static IP addresses and you're trying to, you know, do registry edits and finding the old control panel or do I do this in the new settings and then every time you write something it doesn't always save. Um, so I built a new computer about five months ago and I was done with Windows. I was going to figure it all out in Linux. Um, I was going to virtual machine when I could um, and overall it was a really great success. So. Um, Linux is kind of the only thing that runs in my house. I do have a MacBook for work, um, but I run six Windows servers and eight cluster Raspberry Pi all on Linux. Um, a laptop and a desktop all run either, you know, some derivative of Linux. Um, this one is, as you can tell, Manjaro. I really like Manjaro. I ran Arch back in the day and it was a lot of work and I broke it at one point and I don't want to go through that again. But I love the Arch user repository. Um, I love that ZSH comes by default, like Manjaro just does a lot of really good things that I've, you know, been able to appreciate, especially since I have used, you know, from scratch Arch or Debian or um, CentOS for a bit, and it's just, Arch has everything I've needed, and it's worked really well, so I really appreciate using it, and I think it's by far and away that um, Manjaro and Pop! OS are my two favorite, especially if you're running an NVIDIA card. So let's talk about kind of how I got here, what it was like along the way. So uh, the biggest thing when you're installing Linux is deciding on the operating system, right? Um, with servers, it's like, okay, do I want a Debian or a RHEL derivative? Okay, do I want Ubuntu, CentOS, uh, Oracle Linux, or what? You know, it's, it's pretty easy. You have about realistically like six options, um, and realistically break it down further, like two or three. Um, but with, you know, a desktop, you have to choose, okay, what desktop environment do I want? Do I want to go with a window manager? Um, what base do I want to build this also off of? Where do I want to get my packages from? So originally I went Manjaro, and I was having a really weird memory leak issue. So I went to Pop! OS, and I was still having the same memory leak issue, so I did some diagnostics. Turns out I had faulty memory, and I went back to Manjaro. So that was about the first month. It really took about a month to realize, diagnose, and solve um, my faulty memory issues just because it, it was really a runaway error that didn't plague me too much. Um, and actually, funny enough, I installed Windows to try to like test and see if that was the problem. And where my Manjaro could run for days at a time before crashing, Windows would almost always quit within the first 10 minutes, just straight blue screen. So huge point to Linux there. Um, but then you have to tune your software, right? So if you're moving from Windows to Linux, uh, if you're a WinSCP guy, you're probably going to have to switch to FileZilla. Um, if you like VS Code, that's fine. It's here. You're going to have to manage it and configure it a little bit differently. Uh, MySQL runs a bit differently. Um, you're not going to have all of your game platforms. So if you use Origin, that's gone. There's you know some ways around it, but uh, Epic Game Store is gone, so you have to go to Steam. You have to kind of figure out what Proton is and like what version of Proton do I want to run. And you have to configure that on kind of a game by game basis, and that takes time. Um, so you gotta tune your software, you gotta kinda get used to different ways of doing things, especially like when it does come to the desktop environment. Um, and that took, you know, about a month to diagnose my issues, tune my software, and kind of start to figure things out. And then moving from there, again, by this point, most things have been smoothed out. So I was actually getting a better workflow. Um, a really big advantage they don't tell you about switching to Linux is you can still game, but a lot of the games you want to play aren't going to be there. So I spent a lot more time coding, um, doing system administration tasks, doing research for whatever I needed to do at the time, whether it was like hunting for an apartment or trying to calculate um, you know, groceries to get and stuff like that. I just had more time to kind of put towards something beneficial, not that video games aren't, but something that, you know, had tangible benefit that I could immediately see. Um, and then from there, tuned user experience. This is a huge one for me. I have gotten so used to, um, so I use GNOME. Um, I use the Manjaro version of GNOME. Um, and then on my laptop, I switched to Pop! OS. So I'm using the Pop! OS like flavor of GNOME and I cannot live without it now. Um, coming from a Mac for work, it's pretty much the exact same experience, but just so much better. 
um, the ways I can like manage my different desktops and the way I can just kind of like go to my hot corner and everything pops up and it's so much easier to search for things and search results are so much better in window or in uh, Linux compared to Windows. I'd again say it's like really on par with Mac OS. So I was really loving the experience um, and my workflow and my productivity were going through the roof. So not only could I do less, which made me do more coding and more system administration and all that. Um, but when I was doing it, it was in a much more integrated environment. Um, so I do come from like Windows Subsystem for Linux. Um, and there's definitely segments there, right? Where you have to kind of configure some Windows things and then configure some Linux things and then configure some Windows Subsystem for Linux things. And you're kind of juggling all three of these where when you're just using bare Linux, I will never develop on anything but Linux. Um, it is so much just easier to manage packages get things to come up on localhost. You don't have to set like firewall rules in both operating systems. It's just a much tidier experience and I really have appreciated that. Then month three was kind of my breaking point. So I did on month three, I'm not running Windows, but I am dual booting. So um, luckily my laptop is still clean of Windows. Um, all my servers aren't running Windows Server or anything, but I decided to um, take a disk that I was planning on using for um, a virtual machine for Windows and actually just installing Windows on it and dual booting. Um, would a virtual machine have worked? Probably. Um, but PCIe kind of configuration and getting all that dialed in properly and like doing PCIe pass through, getting your GPU, passing in, um, you know, like my five and a quarter inch Blu ray drive or my like Logitech camera or my mouse and keyboard properly. I mean, mouse and keyboard are pretty easy, but is it possible to properly pass all those things through and get like a spice server get some kind of other way of connecting to it absolutely um as a cloud slash system engineer it's not things i really run into on the day-to-day -day basis and it's not something i want to devote 20 hours to learn what i need to learn learn it and then uh implement it right so i decided to go back to dual booting and some of the big reasons for me were file metadata management and this is probably pretty niche um, but I'll go into this um, virtual reality. Is there Linux support? Yes, but it's pretty limited based on the headset you have, the software you're trying to run. Um, virtual reality is just kind of a bad idea on Linux right now. Um, it is doable, don't get me wrong, um, but I've had too many issues to recommend it. And then just some application quirks. So Discord, MySQL, and Handbrake are just kind of a few that were easy for me to like come up with the top of my head and name. Um, but they all kind of have quirks that just make them worse um, compared to Mac OS and Windows. Um, so I just kind of wanted to lay those out there and I, I can show you that as well. So it's definitely what I'm doing here. So the big problem with me has been file management. So I run a Plex server and I have to, you know, get all the metadata right and configure it and make sure that it gets hooked into Plex the right way. and it's not as easy on Linux as I believe it should be. So for example here, I've been using EasyTag, um, and this is a pretty good application. You can kind of go into here. Um, we can take, you know, Milky Chance by Colorado, and we can plug in everything we need here. So we've got the album, the artist, the artist, the title, you can throw the copyright URL, you can get pretty much everything you need here. Uh, it even has like an image tag and some things like that, and it's it's really great and it comes from dmix an application i use that runs amazing on linux um but this is so much worse than my personal experience using windows uh, with windows you can kind of here let me pull up a file for you but if we go to that same folder on here let me get dmix kind of out of the way but if we go to dmix and we look at that exact same file. If we right click it and we go to properties, I have permissions, which is great. Um, I have open with, I can choose the application and then I get like some data that I really can't manipulate. Um, and this is just a really bad experience compared to on Windows. You can just right click it and you can go to change the name, change the file um, metadata and it's very easy and it's just a really simple transaction where I have to install an entirely separate application here. And this could be something that could be solved by installing Nautilus or a different file management system, but 
this has been the best solution I've found using GNOME. So this was just a bad experience, definitely nothing that is breaking, um, but it was just something that I felt was lacking. And then looking further into it, um, I'm not gonna show you Discord, but I can talk about it. And um, Chris voice is super important to me. I run, so right below me, I have about seven servers, right? Um, they're not that loud. Um, I'm not using any special um, filters right now, um, but they are audible. And that's just a bad experience for my friends who I wanna to talk to. And I don't really wanna put them through that. So having Chris voice is super awesome. And, and uh, the developers of Discord have just said, it's a feature we could implement, but there's just not enough people that use Linux. So we're not really going to spend our time and resources and that's totally fair and I understand that, but that's something that's really important to me. I definitely still use Discord on Linux, but I can't dial it in the way I want. And again, I kind of feel bad because my friends kind of hear my servers a little bit. Um, then moving forward, I kind of want to talk about um, a big one for me, which was ProtonDB. So if you don't know ProtonDB, this is kind of the place you go to check if your game is going to work well right and um a lot of the games i play just don't work well which is really unfortunate right so i am a huge virtual reality player and i play some competitive video games so um csgo i play it runs great on linux um problem is is once you try to put in any kind of external client that has anti-cheat like um, esea or face it it no longer works um and they don't really have solutions to that um they're getting better battle eye, um, I believe is getting, or easy anti-cheat, excuse me, is getting Linux support, um, like it's out. It just has to be implemented by the developers of the individual games. Um, but again, that takes engineering resources. So that's either going to come later or it's not going to come at all. Um, and then again, most of my games I play are um, virtual reality and none of these work for me. So I have an Oculus Rift S, um, which, uh, is unfortunately made by you know oculus or facebook um, or meta now and it has absolutely zero windows or linux support um, are there ways people have talked about on reddit threads getting it working yes um, but i haven't figured it out and i kind of don't want to go down that rabbit hole um, you know computers are supposed to be used um, and I, I enjoy tinkering with my computers but sometimes you just want something to work and it doesn't just work it really gets in my way actually and that's kind of a problem I've ran into so that's proton DB um, another one big one for me is I, I render a lot of video you know I make not only YouTube videos which I have to render um, but also I you know like to rip blu-rays and put them on my Plex server um, and a really big problem I run into is just handbrake so it's the application I use and so if we wanted to add the embedded subtitle, um, and it's really important for me to have this, um, not only do I just enjoy subtitles, but my grandpa is also really hard of hearing and I want him to be able to enjoy my content. So I, I need him to have the ability for subtitles, but I also know a lot of people in my family, like my parents really hate them. So I don't want to burn my subtitles into the video, but I want to have them as an option. And while um, this movie that I ripped does have a source track um, for Spanish and English. The problem is, is it's burned into the video and there's nothing I can do to turn that option off, um, which is exclusively a Linux issue I found. And as this is one of the core pieces of software I use on day to day, it's actually really important to me that this works. So whenever I have to render a video, I usually have to swap back into Windows, um, which is kind of a bad experience just because this does not work for my use case. Um, and again, it's just, you're probably not going to have the same problems as I am if you do something similar, um, but you're going to find your own quirks and problems. And the last one that's really big for me um, is my SQL. So um, right here, if we go to this, you know, if I run this, command's gonna work great. And if I select that, we're gonna get all of our results. My SQL actually runs pretty well using Workbench. Um, the problem is, is when you put in a jump query. So if we put select star from weather chai, here, we'll just copy this one, right? And we're just gonna change the syntax so it's no longer correct. You're gonna put 
instead of date time equals, we're going to say is, right? So that's now improper syntax. If we run that, um, we don't get full error code support. Um, you get partial error codes, but it's not the same and it doesn't tell you where your errors are. Um, and that is really important to me as a developer. Um, it is really hard to write complicated SQL queries as it is. Like I've got some pretty complicated uh, scripts that I write and if I can't get proper error codes, I can't use it. So um, this is a really great option if I just need to quickly do something and I know what I'm doing, but if I'm trying to do any kind of testing, uh, my school workbench just isn't a great solution for me. And there again, alternatives and other ways to do it. Um, I do employ uh, like Beekeeper Studio and um, uh, the MySQL that runs in uh, the web browser, shoot, whatever that is. Um, I do have alternative solutions, but this is my preferred development environment and it not working properly is a really big issue for me. So I am currently, as of month five, dual booting. Um, and I really think there is a badge of honor for not only those who dual boot, but those who just run Linux. Um, it's, it's incredibly hard to do sometimes, and you're gonna have software compatibility issues, and you're gonna have to work through those yourself. Um, but I, I don't believe the benefit was worth the reward for me. Um, I've definitely learned a ton. Um, but what I've, I've realized is, is once I hit about month two, all the fun I had configuring applications and finding alternatives and different solutions to these problems kind of went away because, well, for now I solved all my problems. And, you know, problems come up every month or two um, where you need to install a new set of software or something breaks through your old software and you have to fix it. Um, but all the fun and the joy of building up this computer that's perfectly mine it's kind of gone once I built it and it just became like using a regular computer again. So um, I really wanted to play VR and I really wanted some of my applications to work slightly differently than they do on Linux. So I switched back to uh, Windows as a dual booter. So I still try to spend about 70, 80% of my time in Linux. Um, I pretty much only swap to Windows. I make it a point to swap to Windows to do something and then go directly back to Linux um, and it's, it's definitely clunky. Um, it would be easier if I just chose one or the other. Um, but unfortunately not just one of these kind of meets my everything I need. It does, it's not an all in one solution. So if you're thinking about making the switch to Linux, I definitely recommend it on something like a laptop. So I have had zero issues on my laptop. That thing just kind of, it writes code, um, browses the web, checks my email. Um, and you know, I do a little bit of scripting and stuff on there. It's, I connect to my other servers and I write SQL queries um, and it works great. Um, I love Linux on the laptop and it's come so far in the past five years. Um, but from your only computer, um, it has limitations. And if you're thinking about making the switch, I'd recommend it 100%, but I would recommend dual booting um, because you are gonna lose some software support that you need, so. Thanks for listening and hope you learn you guys learned something.